Hello and welcome into the KE Report. Chad and Corey here as your host, and today we're getting an update from Abra Silver Resource Corp. Abra Silver is traded on the TSX under the ticker ABRA and on the OTCQX under the ticker ABBRF. And I'm joined today with the president and CEO, John Miniotis. And John, it's great to get you on the show for us to dive into what's another key milestone for the company, and that's the updated mineral resource at your Diablilos project in Argentina. Now, you've taken this up to 350 million silver equivalent ounces. If you add in the 199 million ounces of contained silver and the 1.7 million ounces of contained gold, this is a lot bigger resource than most silver companies have, and, and it's a nice mix of silver and gold. So just from a high level first, take us through some of the key takeaways from this updated mineral resource. Sounds great. Well, thanks again for, for having me back on here. Uh, certainly very, very exciting time for the company. As you mentioned, we're reporting a, a major increase here in our resource estimate at Diablilos. The deposits grown significantly across the board. As you mentioned, uh, in measured and indicated now, uh, we have roughly 200 million ounces of silver, which is a nice size silver deposit. <laughs> but on top of that, we have 1.7 million ounces of gold, which on its own would, would obviously be a nice size gold deposit. And all of this is in oxides, of course, near surface uh, across a, a few different deposits. And when you, you look at, at some of the, the numbers here, I think uh, you can see the, the biggest driver of the increase was at the, the Jack deposit. That was uh, no surprise for us. That's the, that was largely the focus of our phase four exploration campaign. But it's great to see uh, sort of the, the outcome there from all our drilling. Tonnage increased by 150%. Contained silver jumped up by, by 70% or so from, from our previous estimate. So I think it's it's really clear here. Jack stands out now, continues to be very high grade, near surface, and this will be central to, to the early part of the mine plan in, in the upcoming uh, feasibility study that we're working on. And then on top of that, of course, Oculto uh, remains uh, the, the main deposit here that also had significant growth. So when you look there at the increase, tonnage increased by, by over 20%, contained silver and gold were up by roughly 15% compared to the last update. And of course, there's still lots more exploration right now focused out of Quilto East. Uh, so we, we definitely see lots of upside to continue to grow this resource estimate. You know, I think uh, when, when you look at the overall uh, projections here, I think you, you could easily see gold going north of 2 million ounces by next year's update. So lots of upside still ahead of us here. But I think this forms the, the basis of a very, very strong feasibility study, which is obviously now the focus for us. And, and that's on track for Q1. So, John, that was a good recap of that table three that just compares this mineral resource estimate to the prior one back in 2023. Now, yes, Jack, big driver there. The one big takeaway being tonnage really across the board increased at all these different deposits. Grade decreased slightly. Can you just explain the moving parts there, why the grade decreased a little bit, please? Sure. So we, we did, of course, incorporate all of the, the phase four drilling. And then we also updated sort of the, the key assumptions. And so when you look at the old resource, the assumptions were out of date for sure. Gold, we were still using $1,850 gold. It's essentially half of the, the current gold price. And I think for, for silver is $24 silver. So we updated those. I think very conservative still, very much in line with all the peers. We obviously benchmark what, what the peers are using. And so now we're using $2,400 gold. 2750 silver. And so as a result, that does lower your, your overall cutoff grade. And so our cutoff grade went from 45 grams per ton to 39 grams per ton. Uh, and there, there was quite a bit of tonnage that was, again, previously captured as waste that now falls in, into ore. So your tonnage increases. Obviously, your, your grade does go down when, when you lower the cutoff grade. But yeah, overall, we're still very, very pleased. Again, a lot of the, the updated resources here come from Jack, uh, which is predominantly, obviously, based on the, the new areas that, that we were drilling, the southwest extension of Jack. So we're, we're very, very pleased to, to have, you know, obviously the increase in tonnage, increase in contained silver and gold, significantly outpace sort of any, any decreases here that, that are grade related. 
Well, and John, just along that same line of thinking, we had talked a number of times uh, over the last year or so about how there were areas of waste that you would then bring into the fold, and it allows you to do an agitated tank. Uh, and so this tank leach area, and then some of it's going to go on leach pads. And so you'd kind of been teasing that idea. Now we got the proof in the pudding here. So maybe speak to how you're kind of breaking up the processing of some of these areas a little differently, but what was previously waste is now recoverable. That's right. Yeah, no, it's great to, to finally be able to, to quantify sort of the, the heap leach material. Uh, as you mentioned, that's something we've, we've discussed uh, quite, quite a bit. And so, yeah, just to back up, I guess, obviously our pre-feasibility study was only based on the agitated tank leach, 9,000 tons per day. That's also going to be the case for our feasibility study. The feasibility study is not going to include a heap leach resource that's still going to all be treated as waste. But certainly, we see upside from this material, which is obviously lower grade, but, you know, adds about 160,000 ounces of additional gold. And so at anywhere near current gold prices, that, that would certainly be economic. And so it, it's nice now to be able to just add a resource around the heap leach material here. As we mentioned, this material is previously just classified as waste. Now we, we believe this can be processed through a low-cost heap leach circuit. Obviously, the benefits there, you would reduce the strip ratio uh, and obviously expect it to, to improve overall project economics. So again, I mean, the, the DFS base case uh, moving forward based only on the tank leach resource here. The reason for that, obviously, is the engineering of the of the heap leach is not advanced enough to include in a definitive feasibility study at this stage. And we obviously don't want to delay that report. But what we're doing is at the same time, we're working on a PEA study, a preliminary economic assessment in parallel, which will take sort of the base case scenario from the feasibility study. And then on top of that, incorporate a secondary heap leach circuit with this material uh, that's being uh, categorized now in the, in the resource category. Uh, and that way, once we announce that PA study, investors will clearly be able to see how this material, uh, when you add it to, to the, the mine plan, how much additional value will be able to, to drive for us here. Uh, we think it's, it's quite significant uh, when, when you look at the, it's over 30 million tons, uh, again, over 160,000 ounces of gold here. And so it's, yeah, no, uh, great, great to be final, be, be able to quantify the, the tonnage and grade there and, and uh, for us to, to shortly be able to quantify the economics of this heap leach material. So these 350 million ounces of silver equivalent, they're across five different deposits. But if we really look at it, Okuto and Jack, they carry most of the load. But there's a new deposit that was brought into here and some of these other smaller deposits really close to Okuto as well. And this Okuto East Zone. Can you talk to us about the growth in some of these smaller deposits that also contribute to this resource? Yes, yeah. So I was uh, definitely there. I, I think you're you're right on point. Okuto and Jack are you know ninety nine percent of of the focus here for this project. Those are the the two key areas. Uh, but there are other deposits here. So at Sombra, we had drilled. I think based on eleven initial drill holes there, it's nice to to be able to see we we already have almost one million tons uh, at Sombra, uh, just over fifty grams per ton of silver with some gold on top of that. Sombra, just like Jack, is very, very close to surface. In fact, it's even closer to surface than Jack. And so there's still significant upside as we look, you know, uh, at exploration plans down the road. Obviously, if you're able to, to continue to grow Sombra, that, that could be very, very valuable. But right now, there's no question. Oculto East is, is certainly where the exploration team is focused. We have that high-grade gold intercept there. Uh, the guys at site are, are zeroing in on that high-grade extension potential from Oculto East. Uh, we have all three rigs drilling at Oculto East. And so we certainly see lots of upside coming from, from the Oculto East extension. Uh, and that will ultimately fall within, within an expanded Oculto pit scenario. And so as we're working on the DFS now based on the, the mine plan from this resource, in parallel, we're obviously continuing to drill, 20,000 meters of drilling well underway there. Lots more news flow coming from, from that program over the coming weeks and months. And then next year, we'll announce yet another updated resource. And again, I think that will largely be focused on incorporating all, all the, the drill results here uh, over the coming months.
Yeah, John, I think even in some of the prior discussions with Dave O'Connor, the chief geologist, that, you know, there's even some people on the team that are excited to see does Sombra kind of connect all the way up to a call to East and a whole parallel trend. And if that's the case, it could be a pretty exciting phase five of drilling here. So we'll keep our eyes peeled on all the exploration work the company is still doing. But this ties into the theme of, you know, the reason you're moving towards the definitive feasibility study as we have just discussed before, but I think it's worth reiterating, is to be able to qualify for all of the advantages of the RIGI laws and all of the tax advantages and uh, the benefits that, that come to the economics by getting everything filed. I believe it's by next year in 2026. So maybe speak to the broader vision that while you're preparing all this for the economic study, as you mentioned, you've got the PEA moving in tandem on the heap leach. You've still got all this expiration that's not going to make it in to this resource, but it'll come in a future resource. So just give people the bigger vision of where the company is headed. Yeah. So, yeah, I think we're, we're moving things in, in parallel here on a number of fronts. And so uh, obviously based on this resource estimate now, we're looking to, to declare sort of a construction decision before the end of next year. And so we're going to take this resource estimate. Uh, we expect to receive the EIA permit approval shortly here, uh, certainly well before year end, uh, sometime in, in Q4 likely. We expect to, to have our construction permits in hand. And then in Q1 of next year, early in 2026, look to announce our feasibility study, uh, announce likely the, the PA study from the heap leach resource on top of that. And also, as you mentioned, get RIGI approval. So RIGI is this new large scale incentive regime in Argentina. It's only in place for two years. So this was passed into law uh, 12 months ago in July of 2024, and it's currently set to expire in July of 2026. And it's really sort of a, a stimulus bill here to, to incentivize large projects from moving forward in Argentina in the very near future. Uh, again, Diablos is uniquely positioned on the silver side. We don't know of any other silver projects that will be able to meet the timelines here other than our own. And again, when you look at the benefits of Riggy, it's well over a billion dollars US at current spot prices by reducing taxes, eliminating export duties, removing export proceed uh, sort of uh, restrictions, et cetera. So there's massive, massive benefits. Uh, and so, yeah, we're, we're fully going to take advantage of, of the benefits being offered in the country right now under the current administration. So we're not going to slow things down. Uh, the feasibility studies uh, progressing on schedule, but in parallel, as you mentioned, there's still lots of exploration uh, growth uh, ahead of us. Uh, so we'll, we'll announce the feasibility study, then on top of that, announce an even larger resource estimate sometime next year. So this continues to grow, but I think the, the good news is that, that we're moving forward. It's big enough already where it's clearly economic. There's no point of waiting to, to redo a feasibility study in the future with, with more tons here. So we're, we're moving forward, and I think investors get best of both worlds. You have a project that's large and, and moves forward towards a construction decision, but at the same time, you still have that exploration upside exposure. Well, I think we'll wrap it up there for today, John. But yeah, it's exciting. And it is big enough now to move forward with the economics on it. Everything else will just be further upside that investors can do some back of the napkin calculations on when the updated resource comes out next year and when they can incorporate that PEA. But really impressive resource here for Abra Silver. And one of the bigger silver resources that's undeveloped, uh, held by a junior. So very exciting times for the company. And we'll be keeping tabs on all the exploration work your team is doing on the ground. So I'm sure a lot of news flow to come through the balance of the year and going into next year. For those of you listening into the call, definitely click on the link below in the show notes. It'll take you over to the Aversilver website, right to their news section, where you too can follow along, have the email updates hit your inbox, or just follow along with the news as it hits the wire. John, keep us posted. We'll get you back on for an update. And as always, looking forward to our next conversation. Thanks very much.